Alrighty guys, what is going on? It is the SS Ultimate Goku back with another video. And as I really try to um work back into um putting out some more of my uh putting more out uh putting putting out more YouTube videos um during this difficult time, obviously as you guys know, it's been very difficult these past couple of weeks. Um so I apologize for the lack of um, content. Um, there's been a lot of different videos that I have missed and uh, I have tried to cover, but I've just a lot of things just been happening over the past couple of weeks, and it's just very, very emotional. And it's been very, very hard to um, do this. Um, with that being said, I do want to kind of try to get back into this stuff as much as I can with trying to keep, uh, the face as I can, uh, with this. Um, so today, um, we are going to talk about the, uh, world and, uh, main event match. Uh, between MJF and Samoa and Joe. Um, specifically just this um, match and the ending and everything that happened in between. Um, so, I will say this right now. Spoiler alert! If you have not seen the pay-per-view or this match specifically, if you do not get out right now, I am not responsible for you learning the outcome of the match. So, one, two, three. Okay. So, my boy Samoan Joe won the AEW World Heavyweight Championship. That's right. And I am so happy about this decision, okay? I am so happy about this decision. I just want to just put it out there right off the bat before we get into anything else. Samoan Joe 100% deserved to win this title. The dude has been a workhorse this entire year, uh since joining uh, Tony Khan uh, because he was originally on a Ring of Honor contract through Tony Khan. Uh, he was doing that. He worked his way into the AEW roster. He started getting booked through AEW. Um, I think maybe CM Punk uh, actually was the one who got him <coughs> on AEW television first. Uh, with the collision show, I could be wrong about that, but that was when he started, that's when he started getting booked, con <coughs> that's when he started getting booked consistently, though, with a with being booked on AEW television, was when he started working on Punk's collision show, when it was still, like, the good collision, not the crap collision that they have now, but, uh, without Punk, um, but, Samoa Joe, like I said, worked his way up, worked on a minimum uh, ROH contract, worked his way up to AEW roster, uh, despite the fact he should have already been on the AEW roster as far as I'm concerned because he was good enough to be on the AEW roster uh, already. But he worked his way up and... Uh, he got to the roster, and uh, he became a contender. He feuded with Punk, and it ended up, unfortunately, being Punk's last match. <coughs> Punk went over, but it was a great match. And uh, after that, Punk, uh, Simone Joe uh, continued to look really good uh, throughout the rest of the year. Um so I'm really happy for Samoan Joe. I think Samoan Joe will be a great AEW World Champion. Um, and uh, I'm really hoping that they don't fumble this one. Because uh, I think Samoan Joe can be a really good uh, AEW World Champion. So, in a shocking turn of events for most people, 
I wasn't that mo- so much surprised that um, Samoan Joe um, won the AEW World Title because there was only two ways this could go about because you knew the devil was going to be revealed either during this match or at after the match was over. You knew that was going to happen. And while this was MJF's hometown, <coughs> I did feel like that the way this was being construed, the way the storyline was being constructed, the only way this works is you swerve and you have the heel win. Um, and that's what they did. Uh, there was only one or two ways they could have done it. MJF would have gotten a lucky win at the end, and then you would have basically had the devil basically reveal himself, and then you would have had to um, basically have the devil face MJF at the next pay-per-view for the world title. <clears throat> I mean, that's the only way it could have gone if you were going to have MJF retain the title. Uh, otherwise, you would have had to have had Samoa and Joe win. So, and also by having Samoan Joe win the title, you can have him feud against somebody else in a different storyline at the next pay-per-view, and then you have MJF feuding against the devil and his faction, you know? Um, So, that was the only way that this could go about. I was really surprised at how they constructed this, because I was really worried about how the devil thing was going to play out. Um, everybody knows, didn't want it to fucking be Jack Perry. By, uh, by the way, fuck you, Jack Perry. Um, as you guys know, I don't fucking like Jack Perry. And you all fucking know, if you watch my channel, you know why I don't like him. So, uh, <laughs> for what he fucking did to my boy. You don't mess with the best in the world. Um, and, uh, disrespect the wrestling industry by being a jackass. Oh, and not listening to your boss, by the way, because, uh, your boss told you not to use real glass and you did it anyways. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's why AEW is mismanaged because you got people running it that really shouldn't be running it. Uh, but, you know, that's my take on it. Uh, so I'm glad it wasn't Jack Perry, uh, Jungle Boy, Ugh. but, um, so, um, it ended up being who everybody suspected it was going to be, and I don't really care if it's predictable as long as it makes sense and there is some shock to it, uh, and even though I knew the moment he came out, when Adam Cole came out the moment he came out and with the attire he came out with, I knew he was the devil. He came out in black. He had the the black vest on, even though it didn't have the devil thing on the back because that would have made it obvious. He had the, the vest on. He had a black shirt on. He had black pants on. I was like, he's the devil. Like, the, when he came out with that entire, I knew he was the devil. I mean, like, you know, he's gonna have the mask like hidden in his like his, his freaking vest. You know, he'll have it in the in the in the vest hidden. So I knew I knew he was the devil. Um, and I thought it was. I thought it was orchestrated very good. You know, they had the they had the minions had him like a little trapped or whatever, but he weren't hitting them. They weren't hitting him like they weren't hit. They're not hitting him. They're not hitting him. And then they do the black screen thing, and then boom, you know, he's a devil. And they revealed, you know, the guys. Uh, most of the guys who uh, were revealed as uh, MJF's, or I'm sorry, not MJF. Uh, Adam Cole's uh, minions are basically people from MJF's past, like Warload, you know, who beat him but never was catapulted to the world title like MJF was. <coughs> so a lot of these guys are jealous of MJF, you know, and that's going to be the story. 
That is going to be the story, assuming that MJF will be still in AEW. Now, I, I have to mention, of course, because I, I, if I don't mention it, people are going to troll me about it. But yes, uh, there is a possibility that, according to MJF, eh, that his contract ends uh, the 1st of January 2024. Now, some people have said that this is all kayfabe and he's already signed with AEW. Um, some people think it's legitimate. Um, whatever it is, obviously, if he's actually leaving for WWE, then this is actually, I guess, the right way to get the title off of him, I guess. Um, but... If this is like kayfabe and he really has signed already with AEW, then this also is good because you can play into that before he comes back, you know, to make people think that he might be leaving. Um, so there's a lot of possibilities on how you could go this if this is a kayfabe uh, contract signing or whatever. Uh, you know, or that he's a free, a kayfabe free agent or whatever. Um, but, uh, I think it is a perfect way to, to transition into a new story for them because now when MJF comes back, assuming he does stay with AEW, he comes back, he's going to want revenge. And at the same time, you know, everybody that is jealous of MJF basically got their conmuckments on him because MJF was the original devil and now they are turning it on him. And I think it is good. I think it is a good, it's probably the best thing AEW has done in months. If I'm being completely honest, because a lot of people were worried about who the devil was going to be, who was going to be revealed I thought this made sense. It made sense. Maybe some people might think this was predictable, but it made sense. There has to be some sensibility. You know, I've never been a fan of mystery storylines in WWE or even in AEW. And the reason why I'm not a fan of them is because the payoff is is always screwed up in the end because the writers never have the ability to foresee the future. Like when Austin was ran over, for example, uh, in 1999, you know, they did that storyline to write him off TV, right? Because of the neck injury, uh, the real neck injury that he had. Okay. And then in September of 2000, he comes back, they have new writers now, and the new writers didn't get an inkling from the old writers like what would they do uh, or who would be the person who would run over Austin uh, when they have to answer this when Austin comes back. They didn't have an answer for that because when they originally pitched the storyline, it was just to write them off TV. They didn't have a finish to it when Austin came back. That's why I've never been a fan of those because then they revealed Rikishi to be in the guy to ran over Austin and it failed because people did not buy into it. And so then they had to retcon it and make it then a month later that Triple H was the mastermind behind it and told Rikishi to do it. You know, I, I, you know, when they could have just had Triple H be the guy to begin with or they could have done what I wanted them to do and I've made a video about that in the past as they should have had Kurt Angle be the person who ran him over uh, which would have made the more sense but I've never been a fan of that in wrestling because the writers now AEW don't really have writers but you know the people that are doing these storylines they don't they don't have the foreseen to know how to do somebody behind a mask or behind a mystery or anything like that and have the end date of knowing, okay, this is who it's going to be. This is what we're going to do, you know, months down the road. So I've never been a fan of those type of storylines because the payoff is always bad. You know, the higher power storyline with Vince, man, that, that storyline never made sense. Uh, uh, how Vince could have been the higher power, but, 
um, it's a meme because of that. You know, you know, it became a meme because of it. It's funny now, but back in the day when it first happened, it didn't make sense, and it was really stupid. Um, so the same thing with the Rikishi thing. I did it for the Rock. Um, you know. That's why I've never been a fan of those. And so that was one thing I was worried about what AEW was going to do with the Devil storyline. Uh, and some people might not like it because it was too uh, predictable. But I'd rather it be predictable than it be stupid. All right? And not make sense. All right? People wanted it to be Jack Perry because he's a heel. Uh, and he got punk fired. You're going to give him a high elevated spot after he fired your number one draw is fucking stupid. He doesn't deserve to be the devil. Okay? He doesn't deserve to be the devil. Who cares if it drew heat? Drew heat. He fired your top guy. That's sending the wrong message to your talent. The only thing I would have liked them to have done here was I would have liked them to have like had Britt Baker involved in this since Britt Baker is the real life gr- uh, <coughs> girlfriend of uh, Adam Cole, so I would have liked to have her been revealed first before they revealed Adam Cole. Like I would have liked to have her to have come out with the devil mask or something, and then she reveals first, and then when he's uh, being you know, restrained or whatever, then you turn off the lights and then you reveal that Adam Cole was in fact the devil all along. That's how I think they should have set it up better uh, because it would have kind of thrown people off if they seen Britt Baker first before they seen everybody else. Um, uh, that's what I think they should have done first. So yeah, um, where do I think this goes? Like I said, I believe MJF has re-signed with uh, AEW. I do think this is all storyline. Uh, will he show up at Dynamite? Maybe not to kind of stay in that whole idea. Oh, he's a free agent. Uh, but I do think he will come back. Uh, I'm not sure how they'll set this up because, I mean, it's going to be like, what, five people against one right now. So MJF's going to have to get like a team. <coughs> And hopefully they can rejuvenate MJF's character because MJF's character has been very bland as of late. Ever since he turned as a baby face, he has been a very bland uh, character. He was much better as a heel. They need to bring back the heel character of MJF, which is probably not going to ha- be able to happen right now since, you know, Adam Cole and all those guys are the heels right now. But uh, they they really need to have more of the uh, old MJF back. Um, But, yeah, they are definitely going to make this interesting now uh, for uh, what they need to do here going forward. Uh, Samoan Joe, there's a lot of different, a lot of people uh, he can feud with over that title. Uh, It freshens it up. It freshens up the title. Uh, We'll probably see the... um, old AEW world title come back now too since uh you know the triple b title was made specifically for mjf so we'll probably get the black leather um AEW world title back um but um it definitely opens up opportunities for other guys for him to feud with um so i i like it and uh I do think, like I said, MJF will be feuding with Adam Cole at the next pay-per-view. Um, I don't know what his injury status is right now, but that will definitely happen at some point if he's not cleared already. Um, uh, because a lot of people don't... like. Well, yeah, he had a serious uh, injury, but some people have been speculating whether uh, AEW are like kind of spoofing that like like he did have a serious injury but they're wondering if like they're not telling the public what the actual like like the the seriousness to it like you know some people are saying that the 
the injury was legit, but it may have not been as severe as AEW has made people believe it was um, because they wanted to lead into this whole devil storyline and make people think that he was still injured. But he might still actually be injured for real, and they're just waiting for him to officially be cleared, but they still are doing this devil storyline um, despite everything. Um, but yeah, I, I'm very intrigued to see how they go forward with this because this is definitely going to freshen things up, especially since AEW has been very stale, especially ever since they fired CM Punk. Um, so hopefully this can bring ba it back because AEW is been bad as of late. With, with the way they have been running the show and definitely one of the uh, better ways to go about this. So I would like to know what you guys think. Comment, rate. If you like this video, my videos, please subscribe. Hit the notification bell for the latest content. Also, who do you, uh, did you guys like the decision that they did for the main event about Samoa Joe winning the title, as well as what did you think about uh, the way they revealed the devil? Do you agree with uh, Adam Cole being the devil, or do you think it should have been someone else? Let me know what you guys think. Comment, rate, subscribe, all that stuff. Uh, I'm the SS Ultimate Goku, and I'm out of here. Peace. Also, besides my YouTube channel, the SS Ultimate, uh, SS Ultimate Goku, Twitch, the SS Ultimate Goku, Instagram, the Assault and Goku, the Discord link in the description uh, for AEW, WWE, anime dubs, cartoons, live action TV shows, live action movies, all that stuff. So make sure to go there and we can discuss stuff. And now I'm out. Peace.